got you in this fucking movie? To exterminate all the lunatics all at once with a filtering system of gas. Yeah, 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 yeah. And do whatever I tell you from now on, and you can join me in eternal time. In the world of reggae, there is no other band quite like Sublime, and I don't think there ever will be. No other band I've found has matched the genuine, funny, and sometimes saddening message of what I think Sublime is really about. For those unaware, this band blew up from two of their three albums, those being 40 Ounce to Freedom and the other being their self-titled album. My point is, they're pretty big. They even created a new breed of white girl. Today, we'll be talking about a more obscure corner of Sublime. We won't be looking at the bigger albums, 40 Ounce or Self Titled as previously stated. We'll be looking at the temperamental middle child of Sublime, Robin the Hood. Released in 1994, its heavy experimentation and the fact that it was more home recorded makes it notable. And you can tell this isn't intended to be a typical album either. Some tracks are just simple dub loops, remixes of other songs. But there are three tracks in particular I want to talk about today. These three tracks don't even have lyrics. I mean, they're not even songs. They're mixed into the album just as any other track would be. All these tracks contain the somewhat deranged ramblings of a man by the name of Rowley Theodore Sakers, or as he's better known, Rally Soliloquy. Rally has sort of become a meme within the Sublime fanbase because of the funny parts of his craziness, and that's exactly what the band intended with his inclusion in the album. As stated in many interviews with Bradley Noel, the lead member of Sublime, it's also where we get our first piece of info down the Rally soliloquy rabbit hole. Um, our old drummer Kelly. His brother had a friend that worked in a halfway home. He was in there one day, and there's just this weirdo, and he was just going off. So our buddy got his tape recorder and pressed record. Then Rowley started hallucinating and thought he was making a science fiction magazine. He was making such a scene that they tried to kick him into the psych ward. We have, thank god, about two or three hours of this guy just rambling. The whole thing is just, well, there's only a certain amount of time that you can put on a CD and we like to fill it with not only good music but some funny stuff too. It's just like stuff you can come across, alright, that is so funny. I mean, that Rally stuff is freaking hilarious. We put about as much as we could on the CD. From this, we can infer he was a drug user, he has hallucinations, he's in rehabilitation for unknown substances, people around him were aware of his absurd rants, and frequently rambles about political slash absurdist topics. From the recordings, we can also infer that he's pretty old too. I would personally mark him around 50 or 60, but this is just my guess based on his voice alone. Whether he's alive or not is not actually known, and searching the obituaries for someone named Rally Theodore Sakers around the LA area brings up nothing. According to the Sublime Wiki, Rally's date of birth is July 9th, 1926, but again, this is not a reputable source by any means. There are also sources that claim that he has passed away, either in an unknown year or on the date of July 25th, 2000, as I'm currently showing. Given this album was recorded through the years 1993 and 1994, I think it's safe to assume, based on his voice alone, Raleigh has more than likely died by the year 2022. This may not be the case, of course there's no record of an obituary, but we'll talk about that as well. The problems we're left with is a lack of credible information. One of the most interesting problems we find on our journey is a total lack of images of Raleigh. There are only two images that really stick to him as search terms, and it's these. The first one comes from the CD release of Raleigh's full rant, which we will also talk about separately. The latter, however, is a bit more mysterious. It's supposedly a photo of him, but the only source is a MySpace page with nothing else on it. The one used in my thumbnail was color inverted, and people used that particular one a whole lot more than the original for some reason. The whole scenario is very odd, and I don't really understand where it's come from. Despite a total lack of information on Rally, one of the best write-ups on the topic I've found is the biography page of his last FM page. 
According to the edit history, this write-up was done in 2010, which is pretty unfortunate as it appears there is missing information at the end of this article. Despite that, this biography is just about the best source of information we have on the man, and it's an essential stop on our search for information, but even this biography only has so much that it can give us. I won't read the full thing, as it's pretty long, but I'd like to highlight some key points that I think are crucial. Rally Theodore Sakers is both man and myth. Featured in three soliloquies on Sublime's Robin the Hood, we hear the rantings of an obviously disturbed man who is obsessed with both science fiction and blowjobs. Isn't the whole thing a hoax? I heard Rally was just Bud messing around. The opinion that Bud equals Rally first came around on online message boards, but there is little, if any, evidence to support it. My opinion, Rally is just too crazy to be fiction. Although the writer doesn't agree with the sentiment, the idea that Rally is simply a hoax is one that we can't just brush off. It gives us a concrete answer on many things, such as the lack of information, a missing obituary, and whether he's actually insane himself. At the same time, however, on the Sublime Acoustic Bradley Noel and Friends album, listen to the end of the 14th track, Freeway Time in an LA County Jail. After the song, there's about 30 minutes before the track ends. Someone can be heard impersonating Rally, saying this is a pre-recording. Now, who knows if this is actually related to Rally at all, but it could be one of three things. One, nothing at all, just a coincidence. Two, Brad impersonating Rally is a joke. And three, Bud, Bud, proof that Bud is Rally. Not likely. Personally, I think the idea that Rally is just a myth is way too lame to be true, despite it working a lot of details out. It still doesn't explain some crucial information we need in the story of Rally, such as who the man who interrogates him during the track Rally Soliloquy Part 2 is, or what drove him to be the way that he is. This biography concludes by talking about Rally's full uncut rant. According to this, the full thing was available at one point via Skunk Records website, which is long shut down, and there's no archive of the website that I can find. The poster claims that on the website, there is a download link for the full uncut rant of Rally. This version includes all of the rants featured on the Sublime album, and even has a cover and name titled Psychosemantic Blockage. Fortunately for us, there are dumps of this album on YouTube, and you can still listen for free. It is to be noted that Sublime cut out a lot of the more offensive stuff that he says, such as racial slurs, conspiracies, and very neoconservative political opinions. If any of this stuff is like a trigger for you, you've been warned. This album was stylized as being a full Skunk Record CD release, and I think it's very interesting that this seems to be the case. As stated, this was supposedly planned out and structured as if it was a full Skunk Records release, but there's extremely limited information on the existence of the CD. On the rant itself, all it is is about 30 minutes of Rally performing his normal shtick. Rally soliloquy parts 1 through 3 come from here, and even the unofficial parts 4 through 6 from the unwritten law album Elva. I've read the manuscript of this entire rant, mostly because I listened to Robin the Hood countless times, and it's roughly more of the same as in the rants, except the cut parts were very obviously cut for a reason. Yeah. Again, I don't support anything he says, I think he's very much so a nutcase, and that was kind of the comedy of him. That someone this insane could actually exist. The most interesting parts of this rant, in my opinion, is the apparent planned CD release. I say plan because I can't find nearly any information on it. I've had to rewrite this script over and over again because during editing I kept finding information that contradicts what I wrote before. What I was going to talk about before was how it would be amazing if that actually was real, but uh, yeah, it turns out it actually could be real. And there's a last FM page with an image of the full physical CD. I'm on to my third edit now, and I went from nothing to more to a full freaking release being out there, and that's pretty huge to me. I mean, there's everything you really need, a cover, a back cover, and the name of the album called Psychosemantic Blockage. The back cover has this to say, 
Disclaimer, the opinions, thoughts, and ideas expressed on the CD are not of those of Skunk Records. Nothing is known about the origins of this recording or the physical location of the man himself, so don't ask. If you take anything he says seriously, maybe you're the one who's crazy. Yeah, not really amazing to hear for our search, but even so, I think we should continue to press on. There's no Discogs release page for this release, so we're unable to see who, if anyone, owns the CD. I plan to make one, so if you have a copy, please reach out as soon as possible. There are also copies of official Skunk Records tapes of this album, as seen here on Rally's Discogs page. There are numerous bootleg releases he's been on, such as Secret Tweaker Pad, a demo tape with Rally Soliloquy on it. Unfortunately, it's only sold once and for $800. Yeah, great. But what we need to talk about is this one, the release titled Semantic Blockage. There's no cover, the only thing on it is handwritten writing saying this tape is some of Rowley's last hours of freedom. We know not where he came from or where he is. The tape is the ravings of a lunatic. Sexist, racist, but very funny. Take it like that, don't take it seriously or you might end up in a psycho tank. Lucky for us, this release does have a Discogs page. It's never sold, but there are reportedly six people out there who own this cassette, and we can publicly see two. One of these peoples is the user Seth's Pool. Going through his account, he joined in 2017 and only put seven releases in his collection. Some bootleg Sublime albums and a couple Nirvana. I really doubt I'll ever get a response from him, but I sent a message regardless, so hopefully we can get on info of how he got a hold of this tape. The other account to supposedly own this tape is William Cham 3 His account was also created in 2017, and he reportedly owns two copies. I've messaged this person, but again, I really doubt we'll see a response, unfortunately. The photo I've used in the thumbnail of the video is one of the only photos of him I can find, and it's not even confirmed if this man in the photo is actually Rowley. As far as I can tell, this is one of the only photos ever taken of him, and there are incredibly slim findings in terms of knowing anything about what he looks like, other than he's probably an older man and Caucasian. Supposedly, there are more photos of him on the jewel case of certain Robin the Hood releases, specifically those under Skunk Records, but I'm unaware of any copies that have any pictures of him, which is a shame. I've gone on to Discogs to check this, but nothing really came out. The only thing mentioning Rally on the CD is a special thanks to him, but this barely scratches the surface of anything, really. There's a whole Google Images thread, but what's shown on there doesn't appear to show us anything else other than the same supposed photo of him. Although we can't find any great pictures, a really interesting interpretation of Rally I found is a short film by a guy named Tim Oberlander. I used it in the intro of the video, and I think it's a really interesting film. Unfortunately, it's all in 360p, but that shouldn't stop anyone from watching it. It's incredible how someone who is featured in three tracks of a gold-awarded album from one of the most famous bands of all time has so much information simply gone, with no insight on who he is and no real way to find out who he was. The only people who would probably know are Bradley, Bud, or Eric Wilson, as they are the only people I found who were able to answer questions about Bradley during interviews or other events. Given that Bradley tragically passed away in 96, and it's been 30 years since Bud and Eric would have known anything about this man, I think it'd be pretty tricky to get a response, even if we were able to ask. I don't want this video to have an unhappy ending, though. If you or anyone else may have a copy of the download from the Skunk Records website, please get in contact with me via email. Many people are very interested in this mystery, and it would be incredible to have any more info on the man himself. If you have any other information on him, please comment on this video, and please share this video to anyone who might have any information. And of course, if anything else comes up, you can be sure that I'll make an update video, so if you care about this search, please subscribe to the channel to be caught up on anything that happens. Thank you for watching to the end, and have a great day. I'll see you later.